This is my holy gear. I mean, my holy grail. Well, it sounds good, my holy gear. Some time ago, I had shown the modeling of a bevel gear in three parts. The result was satisfactory but rigid, non-parametric. That was at my debut with Fusion 360. Today I am proposing a new fully parametric bevel gear model. In fact I propose two of them, a straight bevel gear, and a spiral bevel gear. This is the straight bevel gear. A bevel gear consists of two cones whose apexes are joined. These two cones roll on each other, in contact on their common generatrix. The top of the cones is truncated, the reduced generatrix constitutes the contact line. The teeth are straight along this contact line. Depending on the application, a reduction ratio and a shaft angle are chosen, and the tooth number of each cone is selected. The cone with the lowest tooth number is the pinion, the one with the highest number is the crown gear. In most applications, the shaft angle is a right angle. But other values above or below 90 degrees are of course possible. The angle between the axis and the generatrix of each cone, which is the pitch angle, is a direct function of the shaft angle and both tooth numbers. Because of this dependency, bevel gear cones are not exchangeable and must be considered by pairs, even if they have the same module and pressure angle. Here is a first sketch. At the top the pinion axis, on the right the crown axis, between the two the contact line. The shaft angle is parameterized under the name sigma. This plane is perpendicular to the contact line and is located on its end. It is at the base of the cones. This is the plane on which the sketches containing the tooth profiles of the pinion and crown gear are drawn. The pinion is modeled in its own component. Its first sketch contains the tooth profile. For bevel gears it would be ideal to have an sphere involute profile. For our modeling we will use the tree jolds approximation which is more than satisfactory. The tooth profiles are thus circle involutes. The tree jolds approximation consists of drawing tooth profiles equivalent to those of a spur gear with centers obtained by projecting each of the cone axes onto the plane perpendicular to their contact line. The equivalent spur gear wheels can thus have non-integer tooth numbers. Mechanically this may not seem to make sense. And yet, although the crown gear has 24 teeth, its tooth profile is that of a spur gear with 45.2831 teeth. It is mathematically possible to draw such profile. The second sketch of the pinion contains its axis and the contact line. Both are obtained by projecting their layout from the first sketch of the root component that we saw initially. This second sketch also contains the profile of the truncated cone. The modeling will be overbuilt, i.e. the solid body will overflow during the modeling of the desired final result. Cutting tools will be used to cut the excess areas. These cutting tools are surface bodies obtained by revolving some cone profile edges. Here is the cone forming the main body of the pinion. The diameter at its base is that of the root circle. This cone is extended at its base and at its top using the offset feature. The sweep feature is used to obtain one tooth on the pinion. As with the cone, the tooth is extended by using the offset feature at both ends. The combine feature merges the cone and the tooth into one body. A circular pattern of the previous four features allows to complete the pinion with all its teeth. As said, the resulting pinion is overbuilt with an excess of material at the base and the top. This excess is cut out with the previously modeled surface tools. The excess solid bodies are removed. The top tool has dug the cone a little too much, it is rebuilt. The base is extruded to give the pinion a neat look. 
and finally it undergoes a slight rotation that will allow the correct meshing with the crown gear. The modeling of the crown gear involves the same steps as for the pinion. Sketch of the tooth profile Sketch of the cone and its axis, and of the contact line of the gear. Cutting tools to remove excess areas. The main cone, and its extension, at its base, and at its top. One tooth on the crown, and its extension. The tooth combined with the cone. Circular pattern. Cutting of excess material with surface tools, and their removal. Rebuilding the main cone. Final extrusion. Neat base look. Slight gear rotation. We have just reviewed the set of Fusion 360 features that allowed us to model the straight bevel gear. Let's play with some parameter values. 120 degrees for the sigma angle, the shaft angle. Sixty degrees for the sigma angle. From twenty five to twenty nine teeth for the crown gear. From fifteen to eleven teeth for the pinion. There is nothing to complain about how comfortable it is to get different gears on demand. Now let's look at the spiral bevel gear. The basis is common to the straight bevel gear. The difference is in the teeth which appear curved. In practice, the teeth are often machined with a rotating cutting tool. The generatrix of the teeth curve is thus an arc. This arc appears oblique to the contact line. The angle between the tangent of the arc and the contact line at its center is called the spiral angle. It is named beta in the parameters. Let's first visualize these few concepts from a schematic point of view. Here are the two truncated cones and the tangent plane to their contact line. On this plane is drawn the circle representing the course of the cutting tool. At the level of the contact line, we can see the arc. The wrapping of the arc around the cones provides the effective tooth curvatures. They can be seen on these sheets. The pink and yellow sheets are portions of the pinion and crown pitch cone surfaces. The blue-green sheet is a portion of the disc tangent to the two previous sheets on which they are inscribed in rotation. Rather than an abstract curve on some sheets, I punched a text on the tangent disc. Its rotation between the cones gives the impression of transferring the text onto the cones. I think this example is even more visual to show the desired effect. This can be achieved with the emboss feature. Unfortunately it is not available in the sketch context, but only in the solid environment. It would have been interesting to have a wrap feature within the sketches as emboss within solid environment. I did, however, find a way to get that wrap as we could see on the sheets. The idea was to use the wrapped arc as a path or rail for either the sweep or loft feature. But none of my attempts to get a properly curved tooth were satisfying. So I used another way to model the curved teeth.
This way required many steps as you can see on the timeline. Assume cutting a straight tooth into an infinite number of slices, then progressively moving each of these slices angularly around the cone axis, and you get a spiral bevel gear tooth. In practice, I cut a straight tooth into a few slices. I chose to make 7, this number seems sufficient. Nothing will prevent us from adding more in the future if necessary. So I built some planes parallel to the one holding the sketches of the tooth profiles. They are skewered on the contact line. Each of these planes supports a sketch that contains an outline of the straight tooth. Each outline is the intersection of this tooth with a plane. Let's look at it step by step in the case of the crown gear. I go back in the timeline to the feature that differs from the straight bevel gear. The first step is to model the straight tooth with the loft feature. The start outline is the profile of the tooth, and the end is the theoretical apex of the cone, where the tooth fades to a point. It is extended at its beginning with the offset feature. I should have shown you the sketch of the tooth profile first, now I have. Here are the six additional sketches that will be added to the tooth profile sketch. I said there were seven slices to model a curved tooth, the count is good. Each sketch contains the outline of the straight tooth obtained by intersection. The seven slices are modeled at once with the patch feature in surface mode. These slices are surface bodies. Each slice is then rotated around the axis of the cone. Their initial position coincides with the straight tooth from which they originate. Their final position previews the resulting curved tooth. It is again the loft feature that is used to model the curved tooth. The seven slices are as many profiles provided to the loft feature. The resulting solid body is directly joined to the cone. From here on, the remaining features are the same as for the straight bevel gear. Circular pattern. Cutting of excess material with surface tools and their removal. Rebuilding the main cone. Final extrusion. Neat base look, and slight gear rotation. Those were the features I used to model the crown gear. The process is the same for the pinion. I have not shown you in detail the values or expressions used in each feature. The idea here was to show in an overview how to make bevel gears with Fusion 360. If there is enough demand, I will make a presentation with more details. Feel free to ask for it in the comments. I end this presentation by not resisting to show you my favorite practice, which is to observe the effects of changing the value of some parameters. The gear here consists of a 7 teeth pinion and a 33 teeth crown gear. The pinion with 11 teeth. The crown gear with 53 teeth. Its tooth profile corresponds to that of a spur gear with 260.806 teeth. Funny value. The crown gear with 41 teeth.
the shaft angle, sigma, at 60 degrees. The crown gear with 29 teeth. The pinion with 15 teeth. The crown gear with 24 teeth. The shaft angle, sigma, at 120 degrees. The shaft angle, sigma, at 90 degrees. There is still one parameter to check, the spiral angle beta. I left it unchanged at 35 degrees. I set it to zero, and the result is, a zero bevel gear. One last parameter to finalize the presentation, the radius of the cutting tool. I reduce it by about 30%. Visually the difference is not very noticeable, but the change is real. Always think parametric. Thank you for your attention.